Hey guys, welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. We are in Vegas. Uh, we got some really special guests today. We got John and Nick from How to Film Weddings. How are you guys doing? What's up, man? Doing good. Thanks for doing having good. us. Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah. Super psyched to have you guys. You guys were like, when we started out, I was like, these are our like podcast grandpas that have <laughs> nurtured <Grandpa>. us. <laughs> Killer intro, bro. Yeah, man. That was great. That's awesome. We, no, we've like, arrived. Yeah. And we were like, um, I was like, I got to get them on at some point because like we've been listening to them and it's been really helpful to us. So awesome. personally, thank you guys. And yeah. Thank um, you. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about um, what you guys do as artists and then also we'll talk about the podcast. Okay. You, I'll go, I'm on the outside, so I, and I have the handheld mic. Yeah, so yeah. I can go first. With okay. the red tape on it. Yeah, yeah. you go first. <laughs> you go first. Um, John Bunn with Redeemed Productions. I started in 2007, wedding filmmaking, before it was cool, before Facebook had business pages, before Instagram, before like it was just very like, oh, I can maybe make some extra money because I'm late on my rent, so... I'll get 500 bucks for shooting a wedding. And so it was just kind of did one, did another, started realizing um, this could be something I really like doing. And fast forward a little over 500 weddings later and charging more than I ever thought. You know, it was, it's now made it where I can do this full time. My wife doesn't have to, to work. We have a beautiful home, a beautiful family, and like all the stuff that like I really saw in my future when I first started. So it's kind of been this gateway to um, success I never knew I could uh, do like working for somebody else so I mean I can go deep into all kinds of things but that's kind of the basic intro I'm from Tulsa Oklahoma and we'll talk about the podcast in a minute so that's that's the basics for me yeah so my name is Nick Miller and uh, my wife and I run Wild Oak Films we are based in Wichita Kansas uh, started in 2012 I was actually a uh, graduated school and was a youth pastor until um, I left that job in summer of 2017 uh, to do the wedding uh, films full time. So, um, yeah, I get to work with my wife, and I don't know, we've shot 175-ish weddings and they're together. really good. Way better than me. That's true. It's true. Look it up. Um, but, Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's short about Wild Oak Films, I guess. So you guys, the basic story, how did you guys, you're in Tulsa, you're in Kansas, how the heck did a podcast happen? You have me to thank for that. <laughs> well, or you have me to thank for that. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, so so here here's the story. John has always wanted to be Mr. Education, get in YouTube world and, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, I... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Is that, yeah, I so, like your, your yeah. version of my story. I yeah, like it's it. yeah, yeah, it's good. Want to put travel videos together? Yeah. Is yes, that no. kind of the order? No, he you know, <laughs> for for you know, getting education into education for filmmaking and, and that kind of stuff. And I went to the first venture in 2017, and one of the things <clears> I came away with was, hey, I want to educate. I think leaving, you know, ministry and um, coming and doing wedding stuff, like the education was the thing that I missed. You know, like be working for a church and, you know, doing all that stuff, not much, but like teaching people was something I missed. So I started making some YouTube tutorials and stuff and John saw them and he was blown away. Is that, would, would you, would you <laughs> just keep going, man? You're killing it. I'm just here for the, Our, the eye candy like yeah, normal. Yeah. Um, and so he, at least th these are his words. He was blown away by how great my, my tutorials were. And that's what he wanted his stuff to look like. Right. <laughs> It's very true. <laughs> and so he, he hired me to second shoot, and he will say that I charged him a lot of money. I don't know if that's... I mean, so I, I knew... <laughs> I saw people doing education, and so I had gone from... You know, I'm, I'm the guy that's thinking about money a lot and thinking about not just like... I don't just want to make money. That's not fun for me, but like what it represents, which is time for me and my family and, you know, the freedom to go to my kids' games or like that kind of thing. And I saw so many filmmakers not like trusting in their own work to charge more and I was over here making really good films like if I was grading them you know it'd be like an A it's good it's not like an A++ but I was charging two times more than anyone around or you know and, and people started messaging me and like hey you charge you know back in a few years five six years ago I was like you're charging three thousand dollars for your wedding films like what like they're good but how are you doing this and I'll be like well I do this do you do that? Do you just try to tell them everything in the first meeting? Do you try and like just started, you know, slowly but surely getting about thirty different kinds of questions that were the same question over and over. And I was like, man, I should make some education on this because people obviously need to know this. And I was continually raising my prices and 
And so I, I recorded actually a bunch of content with a producer from Tulsa, just like curriculum for wedding filmmaking. And it just was flat. And I just never, like, I spent a long time, you know, crafting it and getting it ready, but um, never put it together. Never, it just wasn't right. I could tell, again, I've always been very, in my eye on like what looks right, what's going to pop, what's going to make people want to, you know, interact with it. And what I had produced wasn't it. And I'm self aware to say, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. And so I just kind of had it on pause. And then inside of one of the wedding videographer groups, I saw Nick's video and was just like, that is what I want my educational content to look like. And I was like, where is this dude? And he was in Kansas, which is like three hours away from my hometown. And I was like, that's awesome. So I just messaged him, said, your stuff's awesome. And I was shooting a wedding in Oklahoma City. He's buttering me up. Which was like two hours from him, two hours from me. And I was like, dude, I'm shooting in Oklahoma City. I need a second shooter. Would you be willing to come shoot? And so we're at that wedding and he's all like, how much are you charging for this? And I was like, they paid, I don't know what it was. I, I think that wedding was like an eight or $9,000. Yeah. Which you know, for, in, in for Oklahoma, him. you know, you have to understand that Oklahoma is not the East coast or the West coast. I mean, this is middle of America where you wouldn't think that people are, are spending this kind of money on weddings. And don't so they just all have oil money there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of old oil money. <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we got to talking and he was like, you got how much for this wedding? And, um, and I was telling all that good stuff. And then long, Long story short, we just kept exchanging messages after that wedding. And he was like, can I pay you for a mentor session? And I was like, can I pay you for a mentor session on how you shoot? Because if I could shoot and make my films look like yours, I would charge more. He, t he told me, I, I think when we were there, he was like, how much do you charge for a wedding? And I was like 3,000-ish around yeah. there. And he was like, if, if I could shoot like you and had your quality films, I'd be charging 10, 11, 12, like easy. Yeah. And I was like, that... Like that, and I that's think that kinda, bugged him. It, well, it, it, it did kind of bug me, um, but uh, that's that's kind of where this whole relationship yeah. really started, and um, just and talking about what we wanted to do. And it and at that time, you know, wedding film school was like really. That's when it really, you know, Craig was going yep. through his stuff and left. So <laughs> like there was that at least from the YouTube side yep. in weddings, there was like a big vacuum. There was a hole, yep. you know, and so we're like, let's let's do that. And so we started making tutorials and like um, you know talking, but they just never. They never really caught on, you know. Like they were the, fine, but they I mean, weren't they, like they, were they weren't fine, popping but, like Craig's but, but, were. Right, right. Like there, there just there wasn't um, any traction with it. And then one day, um, we just had this idea to uh, just talk with each other and, like you, something about how you're booking big weddings was kind of this thing that we just and we just sat down and talked. And after like an hour, we we're like, did we just record a podcast? And yeah. I was like, I, I think we did. So it wasn't. There really wasn't much. Thought in putting it. It was going like, to be a YouTube video. Yeah, like we were just going to continue YouTube, and then I was like, I think I think we have a, a podcast here, and then as we uh, started going, that John is really good at talking with people, and you know, hey, do you want to be a part of this or you know whatever? And Craig Adams came on pretty early. Ray Roman came on pretty early. Rob Adams came on pretty early, and I think just the consistency, and then having the bigger names in our industry on early on, people were like, oh, like. This isn't just like a one, and like I, a one-off kind of thing. I remember know? saying to you, like, if we're going to do this, it's going to take 24 months before we make a penny. Are you willing to do this? Because yeah. I don't want to do this yeah. with you if you're not willing. Two years is going to be and, a second job. And, and, <laughs> I think, and I think John even said, like, I can't remember where we were going talking about names of, like, with the YouTube channel. I was like, how about how to film weddings? And, like, John's whole idea was, like, I'm thinking maybe 24 months in. Like, we're just making stuff. Like, there is no name. Like, mm -hmm. You know, we'll find it. You know, when we get there, kind of thing, and um, it just kind of yeah. Because if you worked if that way. we would have waited to get going until we had it all figured out, we would have never like got you know the plane off the ground. I think, like, if you're a person who's running any kind of business, I mean, they typically actually say three years yeah before you make a profit yep. or do anything. I actually think wedding filmmakers would be wise to even adopt the same mentality with their own businesses. For sure, I always say it all the time, like pay yourself a salary, like do things like that, like that are based on profit and based on how much you're actually making. But really the idea of like delayed gratification is sure. what we're talking about. It's like, yeah. that's what it is. It takes like, if you're discouraged and you're a filmmaker and you've, oh, I got started two years ago and I'm not making a lot of money. That's par for the course, like with anything. Sure. Like mm -hmm. when you're starting a podcast yeah. that's like, we're doing this podcast now and we have a corporation behind us that we're mm -hmm. running and we're still, we're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's like, if you're starting a business and you're making like any money, 
within the first couple of years, you're actually killing it. You're doing really good. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. doing really oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's really, that's awesome. So like you guys got rolling. Like this is probably something I'm always interested in because we talk about it all the time. We have a podcast where we're like, what do we want to talk about? <laughs> we already talked about that. Been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like how do you guys go about like curating your content, making decisions about like, what people need to hear and what versus what you want to talk about and then maybe compromising in those areas. Like, how do you pick your content? So our, we decided really early on that like our North star is going to be like wedding filmmaking. Like if it's in anything wedding filmmaking, that's what we're going to talk about. I remember we, I, I was texting him for a while around episode like 35 or 40 of our podcast. I was like, to me, this is just like the same thing over and over again. Like I, I'm getting kind of bored, you know, just like hearing the same stuff over and over again. And uh, John's comment was, hey, Dave Ramsey for 30 years has been saying the exact same thing for 30 years. And people love it. My, and my dad's a preacher and he says every pastor has one message. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. good message. Right. And and I in, in that perspective has has shifted because I think if you want staying power and you want to be around for a while and you want your business and stuff to be relative you know you need to have like kind of one central message that you're always pushing and that you're always going with and for us it's you know wedding filmmaking so we've had discussions about you know kind of branching off and maybe this is like wedding filmmaking adjacent and we've you know had a few of those kind of podcasts but wedding filmmaking is where we end up for everything. Yeah, and for the content sake, I mean, to be honest, for the first 20 or 30 episodes, it was like, if we can get somebody on that has any kind of a following, that has anything good to say, yeah. that's all we care about. Like, right. we just, if, if Ray Roman wants to come on and talk about anything Ray Roman wants to talk about, because I, like I said this to Nick early on, is like, your films are better than mine, but I'm better at getting people to see my films than you are at mm -hmm. getting, and, mm -hmm. and he was like, ah. it was one of those moments where you, it's like, Nick's like, dang it. And so like, my YouTube channel was, <laughs> A lot bigger than in the Knicks and I was like you really have to start worrying about distribution and that's with the podcast itself is like what names are going to draw people to be there and then once they're listening is this good stuff or not mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. we always, that was you know the North Star is always wedding filmmaking you know we're not moving to real estate videography or commercial or you know like we're going to talk about wedding films in the name how to film weddings like kind sure. of pushes us into that box mm -hmm. on purpose and Do you then, find that you're constantly circling back to square one with the type of content you're delivering? Like you're always, because someone could be jumping onto the podcast at any point in their career, right? And if they've talked about something, oh, we talked about that hundred episodes ago. Do you find like you always need to basically revisit a lot? I of think the there content? are principles that we're we're revisiting all the time. The crock pot method, you know, where it's like you want to build a business slow and steady. You don't want to put it in the microwave, and mm -hmm. and like there's principles that we say almost in every single episode that kind of are our DNA. And same thing like with someone like a Dave Ramsey or whatever, he's answering a personal question about finance to somebody that maybe has never heard of him, but like the principle stays the same in the principle. Well, and so, yeah. You brought it up. Tell us, tell people about your, your slogan saying, what is it? What do we, <laughs> is it, how did that, how did that evolve? Tell me, tell me about that. The crockpot? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I had, I think I actually heard someone on Dave Ramsey Probably. say it. Probably. It sounds very Dave Ramsey-ish. Um, was just, it, it's very true to how I've run my business is like this slow, steady approach into getting to know other vendors. And, you know, five, six years into filmmaking for weddings, um, I realized the vendors stay the same, but brides change out. Like, I mean, they're friends mm -hmm. and, and everything, but like if I really want to have a consistent income, if I have a really good relationship with vendors, and nobody was talking about that at this point. Totally. And it's like, if I'm really good friends with three planners in town, that gives me 20 weddings a year. And so the, the consistency, slow and steady, and a solid product and all that kind of stuff was what really, you know, stood out to me, I guess so. Yeah, we that, that was something that we really pushed at the beginning, probably probably the first 15 or 20, like we would talk about that like all the time, the crockpot thing. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we've gotten, you know, more and more, like we were getting more and more people like in our Facebook group and, you know, following us and we, we someone would say something crockpot and they'd be like, what? What is that? Yeah. What is that? What are you talking about? Um, because it buns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And those things, I mean, you know, as you're doing a podcast, I mean, it's just like things come out, you say things and then people laugh at them and then you laugh at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing you just mentioned the, the Facebook group. And if, if you haven't heard of the, how to film weddings guys, just definitely check out the Facebook group because that's kind of where the action. It's kind probably of, the most active wedding filmmaker group yeah. on the internet right now. Yeah. 
I, and, I would think so, yeah. And I, I mean, positive, hundred percent, yeah. po- po- positive, <laughs> without a doubt, positive. analytically proven, yeah, analytics. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the the thing that I love about the podcast, and I'm super appreciative of you guys for, is just creating a, a standard vocabulary for a lot of wedding filmmakers out there. Like, mm-hmm. I think photographers have kind of had that for a long time. Mm. It's like this is what we do. This is an engagement session. Just like simple things of like what a client can expect from their wedding photographer, like you guys have kind of started that just, this is what a wedding filmmaker does. These, this is how you, you know, do you put your prices online and just started kind of like a standard mm-hmm. for most wedding filmmakers to, to start with, I guess at the beginning and kind of find their path that we didn't definitely didn't have. Like no, we all probably didn't have when I we didn't, first started out. There was mm-hmm. not like our business is very healthy, but they we're so lucky because we weren't, I don't know. I mean, we had no idea what we were doing. We, <laughs> the, I always think about the first time, the first wedding we ever booked. Um, we, we showed up at a wedding show. So I got this big corporate job that we made a bunch of money on, like a $10,000 job. And then we shot one free wedding. So we went to a wedding show and I was like, we're going to spend all our money on having this incredible booth. Cause I had no idea what this was. I'm thinking like, th- cause I come from the church world as well. And I'm like, everyone has awesome booths. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you guys have an awesome looking booth. And so we had two TVs mounted. We custom made like padding mm-hmm. behind them. We had a little Keurig so people could come in. Yeah. Keurig. Like, we bought <laughs> Ikea furniture. Yeah. So it was like, and we showed up and this one bride walked up to us and the first wedding we ever sold was $5,500. Wow. And I was just like, uh, this is our price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I have no understanding of that journey people had. Because we just started. Yeah. I, and most people aren't, like, as business savvy as yeah. you all, obviously. And most people are kind of like, oh, I'm going to try to shoot weddings. And, like, there were so many groups out there that were just so hateful and hard to like you post something and you just get like completely totally. roasted and trashed and like <laughs> yeah. we just wanted a, a safe place like i am not entering my films into to win awards i'm a very good solid shooter and editor and my films are great but i just wanted people to feel like they could connect with some of the best and like this healthy community yeah. and that's what we knew would would grow was that well, community what's funny about it is like that wasn't sustainable either like we didn't keep booking all 55 dollar mm-hmm. weddings we we would book you know 3500 and we did well but like <clears throat> we didn't know like if i had someone who was saying to me like this is how to grow in a sustainable way maybe i would have been even more aggressive because I would have known, like, I just got in at Castle Hill, the number one wedding venue, maybe one of the number one wedding venues in one of the number one markets in Newport, Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. We had no appreciation for that at that time. So mm-hmm. we didn't work the leads. We didn't do any of that stuff. And mm-hmm. I know for someone, like, first of all, it, if someone's there to tell you, like, hey, you just got lucky. Mm-hmm. You, just, you just landed a whale, and you need to put that in the crock pot. You need to build up that relationship because mm-hmm. you just got you just got blessed, lucky, however you want to put it. We didn't have any appreciation for that. And so, like, if you're starting out and you're listening to this, hopefully you're also listening to what they're doing, um, you're in a great, like, this is a great time to get started as being a filmmaker. Oh, yeah. 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 Lot, lots of room for growth. I, I think it's, <laughs> you say we got lucky. I mean, you only see the positives that came out of it. You don't see all the money we wasted on other oh, wedding I shows used. where we made no money whatsoever. We had no idea what we were doing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's is total we're just luck. wasting yeah. money and just trying anything that we could think of. And mm-hmm. I'm grateful for that stuff. And like, you're not a failure if you do that. If you're getting started out, like, better to give full effort and try. Yeah. But it's certainly if someone can give you good instruction and you can avoid some of those pitfalls, totally. take it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously, we're we're here in Vegas. We just came back from a couple film awards um which i i think is interesting we, we kind of had a little bit of a, a conversation beforehand about the role of mm-hmm. of wedding film awards and kind of like what a weird dynamic it is of, mm-hmm. of just like we're trying to figure this thing out of something that's super personal to a person and we're judging it kind of as outsiders like what is good what is bad what is kind of subjective you guys are, are judges of the love story tvs we are awards coming up we are um, how will you be better <laughs> Why are you better than can, the can you, I'm can not. you guys um, <laughs> talk about maybe the role of uh, you know w- would you guys encourage you know your listeners to submit to 
Love Story TV or uh, I guess a, a, a wedding filmmaking competition? Maybe what what are some of the benefits? Yeah, a- a- absolutely. I say submit submit your work. Um, few a few reasons. I I think that the number one way to get better in your from a filmmaking side is to get critiques from other people, people that you trust. Um, just r- randomly posting in. Um, like unsolicited, you know, places and saying, Hey, give me some CC on this. Like if you're openly asking for that in a really public forum, you need to be prepared, yeah. you know, for that. But so I, I would suggest, you know, finding something like John and I have done this before, you know, we've done this with, um, our, our friend Blake who edits our podcasts and stuff, you know, send films and, and, you know, saying, what do you think of this? How can I make this better? I think that that will drastically improve your filmmaking and improve your business. But also I think, um, from a, like a marketing side of your business. Like we were actually at Wild Oak Films for the 2019 um, awards. We were nominated for film of the year. And, you know, just me, me being able to put, Oh, we were nominated for film of the year, you know, which is, which is fantastic and a great honor. But I think that, um, like, brides that are looking at you that might, that don't know the industry like that. I think that speaks way more to, to their wanting to hire you, it makes you way yeah, more desirable, totally. you know, from that side. So yeah, definitely if, if you can, well, all you have to do is upload a video to Love Stories TV and then say, Hey, I want to submit this. Like, it's really easy. Like you can nominate yourself. I recommend it. Yeah. I mean, I, I yep. second what you're saying. I think so when it comes to like whether or not to submit to a film, like critique, what it, like, I, I just always am recommending people to either have a buddy Mm-hmm. That they're doing like yep like buddy system, um, and yeah I think putting yourself out there and being vulnerable we've talked about this a lot on our podcast but if you're not m- making yourself vulnerable and having kind of this rhino skin like thick skin of self awareness is really hard like my kid is the prettiest kid you know like your kid uh, is not no. as pretty as mine uh-huh. you know and that's <laughs> so my wedding film is awesome it's amazing and if you're not willing to have some you know humility and say hey what do you think. You know, let's have an actual person judge me, you know, in a, in a healthy manner. Well, not and just I think like, the you know. opposite's also true is like someone on the end, other end of the spectrum, like there are times where I'm like, meh, whatever. I just made another wedding film. Who cares? Like, I don't even think about it as art anymore. Yeah. It's like the couple, because I know the couple loves it. Yeah. And I know it's good enough for the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no one will complain, and I'll book another wedding off of it. And you did really well with what you were given. Yeah. yeah. Even, like, some of it is kind of that luck of, like, well, I mean, Castle Hill versus the, you know, Radisson. Yeah, but, but if you <laughs> actually submit something for critical analysis, like, you might kick you in the butt a little. Yeah. And keep you going yeah. and keep you challenging yourself. Because you might be bored, and you don't even know it. Mm-hmm. Because you're just comfortable. Mm-hmm. And, like, you, art is all about agitation. You have to produce agitation to create good art. And at the core of what we're doing, we're artists. Um, you should be a business person. And I actually have no problem with a person who literally doesn't care about the art and they just want to make money. I, I don't have a huge problem with it. I wouldn't enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of us would enjoy that. So I think like if you're bored or you're feeling a little dissatisfied, giving yourself some artistic challenges in your business, like... If you're done, you, you're nailing your exposure every time. You got you can know how to roll focus. You don't have those challenges anymore. Well, composition, storytelling, sound design, like all that stuff, you it actually can be hard to evaluate on yourself on your own. Because if you yeah. knew better, you would have done it the first time. Yeah, and just sitting here in Vegas watching. That's why I like going to the critique because I, it's not my film, but I'm sitting there watching a film, and I might be like, "That's amazing," you know. It's that's. It and then somebody's like, "This part bugged me because of this," and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, you're right. That that does bug me now. I changed my mind. That video is not as good." Or I might be like, "This video's crap," and yeah. the person is like, "No, this is this part was really good." And even though it's not my style, like being able to hear other people's critique, even if it's not my film, has made me better mm-hmm. as yeah. an artist. I think people ingest art on an emotional level, too, and your clients. Your potential clients, like people when they call about our films, they'll say, I just like the way that made me feel, right, Jared? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like they don't articulate anything technical, but it's all technical. Yeah. Everything they're perceiving is technical. Everything is all about like, well, because I was my edit was tight. Yeah. It was moving. It was tight, man. It hit it was tight. Like the, it hit all the points, <laughs> hit all the jump points, and like you felt something. Mm-hmm. And, and there was, and but like when those guys are like, oh, I saw slow motion jitter. 
Yeah. I don't care about slow motion jitter. I wouldn't like, but now I'm thinking like, oh, maybe people would notice that. Yeah. And maybe I should like double check that and like, <laughs> cause I know my client won't notice it. Yeah. But you're like, yeah, I want to get better and better and better. So I think in general, like either the buddy system, <laughs> just other filmmakers, I have people that I'll send things to that are way better than me that are, I could never, I mean, if I, I just, I can't, I don't think I could ever be as good as them. No matter how hard, how hard I tried, that will absolutely roast me. And it's, it's good for the soul. Yeah, that's <laughs> It's good for you. Um, so you guys just recently, because I'm always interested in the money part, right? Because Same. You, need, <laughs> you need to make money to keep doing something. I used to be in a band. We travel around, and I love playing music. And I can't play music anymore. Clarinet? No, no, I was in metal bands. Mm. <laughs> Hardcore and metal bands. But we, I can't do it anymore because we couldn't make any money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like at the time, I remember like this record company called us to so, like we want you to change, and we'll give you a record deal because this is what we'll sell. And we were like, no. And now I'm like, idiot. <laughs> but I so I think like if you're think if you're like kind of averse to talking about money and you're an artist, just know like uh, I heard George Clooney say it one time. He said, I make this film. So he's talking about Batman terrible Batman movies he was in. He's like, I oh, yeah. made this film so I can make Good Night and Good Luck. Mm -hmm. I love those Batman films. <laughs> Did you watch yeah. they're, they're so I just terribly good. I grew up with them. They're, they're, bad. Yeah, they're so bad they're good. The way they're lit. It's they, like, are, they, they are <laughs> made awesome. very similar to, they have more of the spirit of the 60s. Uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wham, yeah. bam, you know, all the yeah. bad puns and everything. Yeah. But he's awesome. like, I make this bad art so I can make this good art. And so I would hope like we can adopt a similar mindset with our businesses is like, you will make compromises sometimes so you can do something later that has no compromise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like we, so when we, you know, I'm always interested in the money side though. And like you guys have worked on this podcast, you've built a following, you've done all the things that are in someone else's class about marketing and like have produced, I think, something that's sustainable and strong and stable, like a real business. And then you recently just launched this course. Is that like, was that the plan all along, or is that something that just kind of like, I think we should do this? I, I, I don't, I don't think that that necessarily was the plan all along to do the complete wedding videography course. Um, something maybe kind of like that, you know. Uh, I know John, John's idea from the beginning was he wanted to do, you know, big conference. And then like record everything, and then you know be able to sell that. Like that that was that was what he kept talking about. Like from the very beginning, I would go we were, right. And Thanks. and um, you know like like that kind but of. I wouldn't stuff. buy it. <laughs> Respect. But yeah. I would go. Bad yeah. props. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, like th that's that's that was kind of his end goal. And then um, we. I, I have thoughts. You you I don't just want to talk. interrupt you, you, but No, you talk. So from the beginning, I I've always said it's kind of like a foggy day where it's like you can see a little bit in front of you, but the further you go, you can see a little bit more. Like if you're, you know, you're driving yeah. in a fog, it's like I can see like just a small amount in front of me, but further I go, the more I can see. And I just kind of knew out there that it was like, I want, like my brother runs a gaming YouTube channel where they make seven figures doing all kinds of just like board, like player games it, like they have 50,000 YouTube subscribers they sell stuff all over the world and like he has these products and these I'm like he's got this audience and he can put anything at this side of the channel and at the end of the channel comes out money no matter what he wants to put there so if you build this really wide channel you can then start putting you know boats on the water and at the end sooner or later money comes out and it's like that's how I kind of looked it's like man if we can just create an audience like I want to create something that they feel like they are winning by paying us money. That's how business works. Yeah. Like I'm exchanging this good. And so in May of last year, you know, we put out our first digital template product and email templates. You know, we each tested on our own uh, businesses or whatever, you know, 75 bucks gets you digital templates. We made them, we wrote out 40 emails. They're really solid. They're really tight and clean, you know, whatever. And they started selling. They started selling. You yeah. sold those? I thought they were free. 75 bucks. Okay. And so hundreds of people have bought these things. Yeah. It's unreal. And so it's like this digital thing. I mean, 
it is a good value, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, and why that's, not just like, do it that way? You don't have to buy this, but we just wanted, we're giving you a free podcast. We're giving you mm-hmm. free content. Yep. But if you want help with writing, because we kept getting so many messages about that and listening to our audience. And so it was like, oh, we should do a consultation guideline or we should do our questionnaires that we send brides or we should do a budget overview. So we have all these templates and it was like money started coming in and it's like we'd wake up and it'd be three more orders or 10 more orders. Or It's like, wow, we have money. This is crazy. And just, you know, because we had done that and had money, you know, we had started accepting sponsors of our podcast and started making money there. We had a significant chunk of money in the bank and we came across Max Sadek who... Uh, Larry Marshall, one of our moderators of our group, introduced us and was like, have you heard of this Max Sadek guy? He does course launches and whatever. We had him on the podcast. And then after that podcast, I was like, Nick, we should really look at doing a course. Well, it was it was we had him on to talk about like Instagram and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, ads, you know, Facebook and Instagram ads. And then actually after that, he reached out to us. Yeah. Like he reached out to us and he was like, I think you guys need to be making a course. Yeah. yeah. Like Interesting. You, 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 you have, you know, the you audience. have this, you have an audience. He, he was in our Facebook group. And at that time, you know, it was around three, 3000 ish. I want to say people in there and, you know, very active in the group. And he was like, I, I have done course launches with people that have started with way less than you guys have yeah. and, you know, done very, very well. So that was kind of like, okay, let's maybe put some of this other stuff on hold that we were thinking about, you know, with digital templates or some kind of workshops or, you know, like that kind of stuff. And let's try that. So we went all I mean, we went back and forth for a while because it was a heavy spend and we were building up this big, you know, chunk of money in our bank account, which we weren't expecting, you know, eight, nine months into our podcast. We were 24 months in our mind. And so people sponsoring the show, paying thousands of dollars to have their ads show up in our show and then the money coming in from these templates. And you're just like, wow, we might be able to afford what this guy is, you know, pitching us if we want to fold all the money back into, you know, paying for... The so Max held, it was like producer? Yeah. I mean, well... He, he, he was marketer. Marketing. Marketer. Strategic. No. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, we, Instagram. His podcasts are excellent with you guys, yeah, by the way. Yeah. yeah. He, his, his, his knowledge. Those, yeah. His brilliant yeah. mind. He's right. gone through, you know, the extra in you know, all the things for marketing. And so we started, you know, and then we went back and forth. And because of what I had learned with other businesses, like I'm a debt-free business. And I was like, Nick, we're not going... Like, I don't feel comfortable going into debt yeah. to do this. I want to do this slow and steady and do what we preach. And so we slow and steady kept saving back cash. And then we signed with him in June and it was a, a very hefty spend mm-hmm. for his time. And then a very hefty spend for the ad yeah, budgets and stuff like that. You just so, kind of triggered me when we started our business and we didn't, we didn't know we were doing this, but we would just like buy cameras and we would buy lots of cameras and lots of lenses. Whenever And every year, we'd say, oh, we want to do this many weddings, and this is how much a kit costs. This is how many weddings I need to book to pay for a kit. And this is how many years the kit needs to last for to be profitable, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we would just buy cameras and buy cameras and buy and build up assets that were money-generating assets. Mm-hmm. And, so, and we always tell people, like, not always, because we've only done, like, 30 episodes. <laughs> we will always, when we've done hundreds of episodes, tell people that, like, you need to be measuring the return on every dollar you spend and putting like a place for it and saying like, I made this much money off this much money and like, it needs to be exponential. Yeah. And it's like, that's really what we're talking about here is no matter what you're doing, you're building up a war chest Mm -hmm. and you need to go and it means like, you know, what's the guy from uh, shark tank. We'll always talk about like your soldiers. I'm going to send my soldiers out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's like, that's what it is. It's like you're building something to build something. You know, and I think a lot of people, they're living hand to mouth as wedding filmmakers. They really are. And it's not just because of what they're charging. It's the, some of their bad habits mm-hmm. and the way that they're taking, like, totally. I know guys that switch systems every two seasons. I, we've been doing weddings for 10 years. We've never switched off Canon. We shot with Mark IIs until three seasons ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, d- d- like, I would never, ever think, like, oh, like, I need to shoot 4K. We're still doing 1080 because yeah. customers aren't asking for it. Sure. And it's like, at the end of the day, like, it's really, that's your wedding business but or photography business or whatever. That's the same as a podcast. It's just good business principles. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're building this thing up. Yeah, and after time, I mean, that was June when we signed, you know, with Max and we didn't have, you know, we, we counted our costs and knew, like, budgeting and out, like, okay, we're going to be able to, 
pretty close to make it. We're going to have to like really push hard. We're not going to pay ourselves. We're not going to, and, you know, and this is on top of our 40 hour a week jobs. We're spending another 20 to 40 hours a week doing this podcast and moderating a group and building this community. But I have always seen like you build this wide community and if you can serve them well, then money happens. But at the same time, it's like somebody that's introduced to our podcast today may not purchase something from us ever, or it might be two years from down, like, but my mindset is so forward thinking. And so we started at that point, pushing everything back and getting really laser focused on this course. We shot it in September, edited October, November, December, and started marketing in January, launched in February. And so like, on the other side of it is like, whew, it made a lot of money, it, it's great, like life is good, but like it was a gamble, it was a risk a very calculated risk that we paid cash for, but it has completely now, like now that we've built that system in place and, and have done that now we're reaping the benefits of taking that risk. And now we're able to fold back even more of our time and more of our effort to generate more and to keep that going. So let's downscale that because most of us, I'm probably unrelatable and you're kind of unrelatable in this situation. And yeah. to maybe certain people listening is like, they couldn't even imagine how they could apply those principles to their wedding creative business. How does somebody kind of take that philosophy and apply it to their own business? Because I do believe they can. I'll let you start. Okay. I mean, I think for me, like with Redeems Productions, my company, like I had JVC mini Averio, mini DV cameras for my first couple weddings. And like I took some of that money and I, I had to eat and pay myself, but like I would save back money and slowly bought, you know, like a Nikon D90 or something like when DSLRs came out or slowly, but surely kept buying systems and buying and get like at that point, you know, if I owned it outright, I could grow my business. I could make more. And I just bootstrapped it and worked extra hard doing extra weddings that I, I didn't really want to do or taking extra side jobs. I remember filming hockey tournaments and, uh, you know, like putting together photo montage slideshows for funerals or for things. It's like anything to make extra money to be pouring it over. And so I always tell people, especially on our podcast, like you need to have like at least a 36 month, like, okay, 36 months from now, I want to be here. Now let's walk backwards and see what steps are to get there. And then mm -hmm. 24 months, okay, 12 months. You know, it's in, in, if you define it, the goal, and write it down, and make it attainable. That is the literal side of you know practicality for growing your business. If you're new in your business, or if you want to just get to like, if you're not writing out where you want to go, you're literally just going you know randomly. Yeah, and, and practically speaking, so many of us you know might say, I want to make five thousand dollars on a wedding. Mm -hmm. Like that's my goal this year. I want to mm -hmm. make five thousand dollars on a wedding. But they literally have like that's it. Like they, they, nothing else is other than the thought. I just want to make, but they keep doing the same thing that, yep. that they're doing. Um, I think specific for the wedding video industry, um, we we tend to be way more like gearheads and like want the newest and best and stuff. And some advice that I got when I did a mentorship with David Renosa from Forestry Films, he said, anytime we want to buy a new piece of gear, we ask two questions. One, will this help serve my couples better? And if the answer is yes, he says, then I ask question two, will this make my life easier on a wedding day? And if the answer was either no, was no to either of those questions, then he was like, then we did not need that gear. Well, and the, no. you have to be honest when you're defining that too, because if you say, will this make my couple's life better? And the, it's like, well, this is log. <laughs> like, do they really know? Like, you know, and I even say, I would add the third question is, does this add time to my post production? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a huge one too, you know, because yeah, it might be adding 4K, but you know, how now do you need new computers? Do you need that's new hard overhead. drives? Yeah. Do you need, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. But like, I was kind of drooling over all this stuff and then I did this thing with him. And so now, like we haven't, since I did that mentorship with him two and a half years ago, like we've been, so we bought new lights and we just bought a new, you know, audio recorder and stuff, but it's like stuff that we have decided this is going to make our films better. This is going to, which will better serve our clients. You know, it, it's stuff that I think that we need moving forward, especially the stuff that I was using was, you know, older and, and, and outdated. So, um, I, as as you're you know building your business and you're trying to grow it, if you kind of put it in that kind of context, well. And it's 
Like, I thirty-two bit flow is a perfect example of what is about to happen, <laughs> right? Everyone's gonna say, "Oh," for which they don't really understand what it is, but they'll say like, "Oh, I'll never have peeking out again." Sure. And I'm like, I cannot remember the last time I recorded a wedding that peaked out. Mm-hmm. It doesn't actually solve a problem for me that I'm having. I'm not having this problem. It's easy for me to record the right levels. Like, I'll just plug two cables into the thing and turn one to level four and one to level 10 and mm-hmm. whatever it needs to be and call it a day. And I think, by the way, I have no problem with, like, if you're picking between one or the other, you might as well get the sound devices. The preamps are better sounding. It's a great sound. It's a great piece of equipment. It's not, like, so much more expensive that I wouldn't get it. But people that are, like, perfectly fine with their h sixes and it's working fine are now suddenly like should i buy this because and it's like do you suck <laughs> at recording audio no I, yep. it's good well then why do you you don't need that you're doing a good job you don't need it i think a lot of people you know especially in their first five years like I've, this is my 13th season and i've been on the c100 mark twos and c100s for like over half my business now yep. mm-hmm. and I'm charging, you know, we we are booking weddings in Oklahoma that are, you know, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars for a wedding film, which is unheard of. I mean, most of them are between eight and ten, but um, nobody's asking about if I'm shooting raw at eight K. They're not asking about, you know, but what you know, the thing is, I think that so many of us do, especially gear related. Like, we don't focus on what really matters with our... Like, yes, we're wedding filmmakers, and the art needs to be there. It needs to be great. But you have to leave an impression with your personality. You have to leave an impression with the way you treat the mother of the groom and the way that you deliver your product and the way like the way you take care of people. And so many of us are like, oh, I'm going to go buy that Zoom F20 whatever 32-bit float thing. Like, I don't care about gear at all. Like, I, I'm like, Nick, what does this thing do? Great. I don't care... Like I never, like it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. It does, but it doesn't. Like I know what I'm looking for and I love the way my cannons look and all that. But like I'm not going to fight you about Panasonic versus Sony. Like I don't care what other filmmakers really think. What I care is if brides love my films, if her mom loves the film, if the wedding planner loves the film, and most importantly, if they're paying me a crap ton of money to do it. Because if they're, if they're paying me a lot and they're happy about it, like they leave saying it was the best purchase of their wedding to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a video, that's like what I made in a year at my church job, mm-hmm. and in one weekend. And then it's like, yeah, I, I'm I'm good with shooting twenty of those a year, and I'll be just fine in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on that. And and that gives me this freedom to shoot in a different way and to edit in a different. And so that is what matters the most to me more than the fancy piece of gear. Yes, you need new stuff, and yes, you need to upgrade. But so many people focus all on that, all on other filmmakers, and it's just a waste of time. We, w- one thing that we, you know, firmly believe in is, like, serving your clients very, very well. Mm-hmm. And, and you can do that through lots of different, you know, avenues, lots of different ways. But I think as, as people get kind, kind of like, you know, you were saying about, you know, you got this wedding at this awesome venue, and, like, you didn't, you didn't realize what you had ahead of, and I, and I think that so many people, when they're first getting started, they're focusing so much on, like, their film and what it's going to look like and, you know, how it can get them more instead of focusing on, okay, how, how can I serve my clients the best? How can I help them out through the process? And how Mm. can I, how can I encourage them and how can I serve the other vendors and and all of that stuff so that we can, you know, you do that over time, you know, if, you know, we're talking about, you know, $5,000 in a year, you know, you serve, very, very well, the people you're around and you kind of have that reputation, okay, that's a path to get to that price point, yep. right? Well, Jared's really good at that. Um, <clears throat> like, we have this large volume of weddings and everybody refers us and it's really about the way that we treat them. Mm-hmm. It's Definitely. really about, and we're not even attempting to make the most high-end film we're attempting to have the most happy customers. Yeah. Mm. Jay's, al- Jay's always really said it. Like, and I think it's kind of the unspoken probably mantra of our company. It's just like, do the things you say you're going to do. And it's like that simple. It's like, yeah. if you do that, you're probably better than half the industry already. Like, like 80% you know, of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like email people when you say you're going to email them. Send them the things you say you're going to send to them. and like Treat people with kindness. Yeah. yeah. Show up and just be pleasant bring good vibes and like literally your film can 
I hate to break it to people, but your film can be like mediocre to crap and you can have a career. Yeah. Like making good films is the fun part that a lot of people get jazzed on. But if you're just a person that's like, can I be successful or I am not successful? Look at how you act. Like if you are a jerk yeah. or yourself, if you're conceited mm -hmm. or if you're hard to work with or unreliable, your film, you will be capped either at a certain price point or at a certain volume, mm -hmm. one or the other. But like, if you can figure out a way to treat people, you can make a very good living making very mediocre films. And like, I'm totally okay with that. Like I- Yeah, I think you definitely, you burn more bridges by being a jerk than by being, you know- A bad filmmaker. And, uh, yeah, a bad filmmaker. I, yeah. I, worked, I worked with the planner last summer and she was talking about this photographer. She said, by far my favorite images I have ever seen in my life from a wedding we did, but the guy was awful to work. He wouldn't mm -hmm. listen to me. He wouldn't tell me what was going on. He was running late. He was running by and he didn't care. And even though that they were my favorite images, I've never, I have never referred him yep. because the same conversation was, with the he's planner. awful to work with. Yep. And you know, I, it, it's, it's, good and kind of crummy, you know, that, that who you know matters more than what you know, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and I think that's, that's like who you are as a person and, and how you treat other people, like that goes way further, yeah. way further. than having the most beautiful work, you know, that everyone wants. everybody has the person in their industry that is like the old school videographer that has the really good relationship with the high-end planner. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, maybe you do, but oh, don't we uh, so there's a couple of companies that are some of the, you know, some of the, the really big money planners in town or in the state or tri-state, like whatever. And it's like their films are awful, awful. And they are the sweetest people. Yep. And they take such good care of their couples and they post the films mm -hmm. and it looks like they're straight out of like The Bachelor or something. It's just like <laughs> so bad. This is so terrible. Like why are they lit like this? Why? And it's, you're just like, you see that they spent $20,000 on the band and they spent yeah. 50 on flowers and they, and it's like, oh my God, like I would have done that so much better. And it's, it's all about who you know and, and yep. those relationships, the, that planner's like, yeah, that's who I refer. Well, yeah. we, we were, we, we were talking about last podcast, we were talking about like just big numbers, industry numbers. And I'll just always kind of kick people's butt a little and say like, you are not special. There's nothing that you bring to the table that's special about what you're making to other people, maybe to yourself, maybe to your wife, maybe to the people around you, but your art is not that special. It's replaceable. It's totally replaceable. And the only thing that's special about you is you and the relationships that you form with the people that you can go connect with because that's what's going to carry you through. That's what's going to take you over the finish line. We had the exact same conversation with a New York City planner and she's talking. She's like, look, there was a photographer that I worked with that if I told you their name, you would know them. They were like a 15K plus photographer. And she's like, I would never work with them again. I will, I'm just actively trying to never work with them. If a person wants to work, I won't even take the wedding because we had such a bad experience with that person. And it's like, word travels, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other side travels too, though. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they were so wonderful and pleasant. Mm -hmm. Like, you've seen that all the time. Referrals, like, I'm convinced that some planners don't even look at films. They totally. just know the, you know, yeah. they know you. And they're like, I really like that guy. They'll never watch a wedding film. They might see it on Facebook, like in January, or be like, yeah, they're still good. You know, but if, if they're like, I love being around this person, they, they make no my hassle. life. They want no yeah, hassle. no hassle. Take I don't really want to think about you. I just, like you. when I encounter you, we have good vibes. We have a good connection. And, you know, you'll go a long way. I, I was talking to someone the other day and they were like, does anyone like, you know, have relationships with planners? I was like, oh, of course. Like, yeah, that's like half of our referrals is from planners, I feel like. Or probably less, like 30, 40. I would say our out of 120 weddings, 60% are either photographer, vendor, or referrals, or um, wedding planner referrals. Probably, yeah. Yeah, Probably and more. it's like, if you're running a business, and you know, it's the classic in marketing, the 50-50 ratio, right? You want 50, 60% referrals, 50, 60% new leads from your stuff. But the referrals part is the thing you can control. Mm -hmm. The marketing you can, of course, too, but there are market, it's harder to control, and it's more expensive, and it's more of a pain. But if you're getting started out, like, I think it, it really is the same thing that's really happened with your podcast, right? It's like your listener base referred to you. Oh, yeah. 
Yep. This was good. I like this. You should mm -hmm. listen to this. You should like this. We just we're new to this, so we don't have any of what you guys have. And we aren't nearly as likable as you. No guys. way. No, you're not. I was gonna say that earlier, but I didn't want to say. I'm not, like for I'm like trying to figure out how to trick everyone that I'm a nice guy. So, <laughs> but like so we 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 just released this little clip, five minute clip with some numbers that were helpful to people, and then suddenly I get, you know. 50 new people in the group, 50 new subscribers, and you're like, oh, I just did something that they referred me. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I've didn't. i never met those people, but someone said, oh, this was helpful to me. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's the same in your wedding business. Yep. It's just people. Yep. 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 You think about like our podcast, especially at the beginning, it was audio only. I mean, we recorded on Tascam DR10Ls to start with, and then some crappy like Shure mic, you know, then like the gear wasn't ever... You know, and it was like I was recording, didn't know anything about studio lighting because I don't, didn't care. And like we slowly but surely got better on that side of stuff and like had this journey. But what grew it was eyeballs on the videos, earbuds, you know, like good content. And we said it from the beginning with the podcast, like we wanted it to feel more like Jimmy Fallon, mm. you know, than CNN news. Or we wanted it to feel like a cool hang with somebody that, you know, so many people reach out to us and they're like, I feel like I'm your friend, I know you, and that's the biggest compliment we can but get. But isn't it the same on the wedding day? Exactly the same. It's the like, same, same as that That's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. we have, and this is what I will say, I don't know, you should not be interested in impressing other videographers. They're not going to give you a buck. No. Like, you should, be you should really, really, really want to impress photographers if you're a videographer and planners. And it's all about knowing the food chain, right, and who eats first at the watering hole in the wild of wedding filmmaking, which is venues, planners, photographers, yeah. you're down there somewhere. Yeah, it reminds me, Lindsay Conklin you're with, with Larev Films is one of the people I look up to in my business. And 12 months ago, nobody in the wedding video industry really knew who he was, but he's being fo like featured in Brides and Vogue and Celebrity Weddings, and he did Tiesto's Wedding, and he's doing like he's doing all these. Didn't he just shoot he in Harpers too? He just yes. shot. In, he shot Engage yeah. as well. Yes, yeah. and so like he, like I'm watching him from afar, and like that's what's you know I'm the most excited about like the celebrities in the business world, you know, like mm -hmm. the ones that are killing it with their business. His films are great. Mine are very comparable to his quality. But he has built a referral and lead list and going to these higher end events. And, and he, up until 12 months or so ago, nobody knew who he was because he didn't like really care if I knew who he was. Yeah. He has 15,000 Instagram followers or whatever, and it's brides and high end wedding planners and his videos go zoom, zoom. And they don't know the difference. They don't know me. They don't know Nick. They know Larev Films. And they're great. They're good enough. They're, they're great films. They're not Alex and Whitney with Sculpting with Time. They're not like this piece of art. It's a very solid, clean film that is great and marketable, and he has completely capitalized on that. And so that, that's the kind of stuff to me where it's like, I don't care. I'm happy if Nick likes my film, but like I don't want my films but to be like But that's so Nick's. transferable yeah. to other people. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, Stop Go Love films are fine. They're just fine. Like... Uh, sometimes they're, they're great. Fine. Sometimes they're they're, they're the never bad in the world. Like, That's why I take Toyota all the phone Corolla. calls. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're yeah. very yeah. Cert nice. good films, and, and like and like, but like, we knew that they needed to be relational. Like the, it's all about relationships, and like we, no one knows who the heck we are mm -hmm. at all. And we were running one of the most like volume businesses in, in America, probably. Yeah. And we didn't even think about other video videographers. I think to a detriment, by the way. I think we could have done a better job. Just we just were so focused on what we were doing. But like, it did. It, it doesn't help you be successful to care about what anyone but your clients think about you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help you be successful. And it's like people are so preoccupied about it, so preoccupied about it. it like it's just ridiculous to me. And I'll see some people, and I want to be like, I want to like take them and say like, you so insecure and you need to just like to take this Facebook group way too seriously mm -hmm. and you need to like if you spent half the time you did posting in Facebook groups and like building like caring about what all these people thought about you and actually paid attention to like go to a wedding planner party yeah like go to their events text these people take them out to dinner those are the people you should be impressing join their Facebook group 
mm-hmm. like whatever it is. But like, so we're gonna switch it up a little because I want to get like we'll get a little personal here, and we're gonna talk about. We always try to do what's your favorite thing right now? What are you into? What's a personal thing? So I'm gonna tell everyone about what my favorite thing is. My favorite thing, and you guys have a, probably a different opinion on this, is sushi burritos. <laughs> Right, guys? That was good stuff. We had, every time I come out west, they'll have some, like, frou-frou west thing. I mean, we're not quite out west, but to, for me, we're out west. We're pretty far west. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're pretty, I'm pretty far much west. just like, only like California's out west. LA. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty far. It's so anyway, way. like, every time we go out, come out to this place, I'm always going to have some, like, L.A.-inspired thing, and I'm always like, oh, I want this on the East Coast. And, like, I love sushi. Obviously, where we live, sushi's a big deal. But sushi in a burrito, dude, it should exist mm. everywhere. It is so good. If you're into sushi and you're into burritos, why not combine them, right? <laughs> okay. I don't even know where to go from there. Yeah, I, 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 that's I, good. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> oh, man. I would say uh, it's, it's kind of an older show. Wow, I just, like, destroyed this microphone. Um, the new season of uh, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm oh, is dude. fantastic. So funny. <laughs> it's like one of the better ones. Uh, that's what I'm into now. And we have a lot of podcasting to go uh, for this week. So I'm going to say you're Curb Your Enthusiasm. Trickle it out. Trickle season it out. 10. Trickle out. Yeah, We're, worth your while. So tell us something about you guys personal. What are you guys into? <laughs> I could start with something. but I don't Okay, I, I want you to start with something because I'm, I'm so still. So not a show. I'm, not a, like I've really been personally into myself. Okay. okay. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Not in a. Not, don't laugh back there in the. Ca- <laughs> Here's the thing. I have always been so worried about making everybody happy besides me mm-hmm. until like the last two years. Two years ago, I had 12 employees. I was running volume. I was unhappy, and I felt like I had to grow a big business to be important mm-hmm. and to be. And, and you I, did, and you failed. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 for sure. And, and so we let go. I let go of a lot of people. It was really hard to do. I gave them great severances. It was, it was great. But like over the last two years, I have carved out everything in my life that I didn't find to be enjoyable or pro- like something long term that I feel like would profit. Mm-hmm. And life has like it feels like I had to turn the Titanic around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it is turned around. And as it sits today, I have more money than I've ever had. I have no backlog. I'm creating the things I want to create and only working on the things that I want to work on. Like I'm here because I want to be here, not Mm -hmm. because I have to be here. And so my life looks as like I don't have to go into work right now. The things I'm going to do are all to make residual income moving forward or all to make relationships and to take care of people and to love my family and to love my my kids. And, And so that is what I've been focused on. And I felt almost guilty to be focused on me like that growing up with a, you know, three brothers in a very, uh, you know, boy heavy house and like having to just fend for my opinion, never had an opinion on anything, never felt like it was right to have an opinion. So having an opinion, making it like, okay with conflict in life, like this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Um, that's what I'm into right now. Yeah. That's what I like, and Dude, it sounds super is, selfish, but that's it's. What did, the what least did Alex say? Uh, that I mean, he probably stole it from someone else, but he said, "Stop giving to things that aren't given to you." Yeah, yeah. Like, which I think beat that. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you should have let Nick go first. He's like uh, burritos too, <laughs> sushi burritos, Kirby enthusiasm, yeah. mic drop. Your turn. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I, I read this. You sti- know better than to let me go first. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I can't really follow that up. Uh, that, that was that was good. I like your good shoes. Those thank are cool. you, thank you. I have a. You talking to me or to? I, mean, I like yours too. We, we have, have the same. Shots. <laughs> he has the kill shots too. We are. Yeah. Okay, back back to me um, <laughs> here here a little bit. So That's good. I like yeah. I like what you're going. Yeah. Now. So <laughs> the. Um, I'm into uh, focusing on me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feeding let, orphan children. I let go. That's what I would do. I let go of all 14 of my employees, yeah. and um, I've lost 67 pounds, and um, that's none of that's true. I have lost 33 pounds. I, I, I whenever, about that. whenever, whenever you said, whenever you were talking about focusing on me, I thought that's, that's where part you were of that was yeah, part right. of it. But I don't okay. want to keep talking about me. Okay. Even, unless you guys, we can we do five more minutes on me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. sure. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, so I saw this, you know, statistic. Um, probably in January or something that said the average, you know, millionaire business owner, you know, reads something like 32 books a year, you know, just on average. Yep. And so I made a personal goal this year to just read uh, 24 books, so two books a month. 
and I'm not going to read all business books, but I want to be heavily, like, definitely heavily weighted, you know, more towards business books. And so... I saw that you read Profit first. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Dude. It's so, I mean, yeah, just, you know, applying those... that that stuff to your life and your business and your personal, you know, all that. Um, I read, read profit first, read, uh, David, uh, Donald Miller's, uh, story brand, building oh, yeah. a story brand. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, just, just finishing up good to great. Um, seven. That was the Ritz Carlton guy. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's not, I no, it's it like yeah, it, it, it's, it's old. It did not, there's lots of principles that are very like interesting, but it has not aged well. I will say that <laughs> like <laughs> circuit city is one of the main businesses that he's like, be like, yeah. be like them. And you're like, um, I don't know about that, but, the but young it, guys back there. Like, yeah. They're circuit like, city. what's the yeah. circuit yeah. city? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Um, I've heard of that. Yeah. So, so Four services state of the art. That's yeah. where it's at. Back to <laughs> yeah. So, so anyways, just, just reading and how, um, I'm already like, how it's already affected, you know, uh, how I'm coming at my business and how I'm treating people and how I'm just thinking about stuff that, you know, even, you know, a few months ago, John would say these things like, where, where, where are you getting this stuff? And he's like, I just read a bunch a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, like that kind of stuff. So that, that, that's definitely something that, um, is, is really inspiring me and, um, that I'm really into right now. So we're investing in nothing and you guys are investing in yourselves in great ways. So we, we have a lot to learn. <laughs> What, uh, what, Awkward. you know, you guys are 80 something podcasts. How, what are you, uh, how to, many today, is? today 90. was episode 90, like 90, dropped okay. episode 90 this morning. Awesome. Yep. So you, you guys are cranking away. What is next that isn't kind of, you know, under wraps for how to film <sighs> weddings? Where are you guys going? We were, we were talking about it over breakfast this morning in a nice Las Vegas breakfast. It was deli delicious. Um, <laughs> John had, had a, a great breakfast. I had, John I had, had a pancake that was like this yeah, big. It was yeah. really good. <laughs> I mean, he here's what we are doing. And, you know, we want to be consistent. We want to not try to reinvent the wheel. Things that are, we're doing right, you know, it's like as artists, you want to keep doing new and more exciting things. And like to me, it's new and exciting to like keep killing it, doing what got you there and then trying new little things as you're going. So we're consistently going to be putting out at least one podcast a week. We're going to open back up our course sometime in the summer. We have a lot of digital products that we've wanted to be developing, but we were putting all of our effort into the course. Um, with the freedom that I have now and that Nick has now, you know, a lot of people purchase this course and that gives us a lot more freedom with you know, our finances to, to be able to spend more time creating not just the podcast, but YouTube videos and tutorial videos and behind the scenes at weddings and just like really pour into the the content that won't make us a ton today. But like we've never really made a video. We've made two videos, I think, since we started the podcast that were not podcasts. And they were like a behind the scenes on how Nick sets up his practical light or like what he uses, you know, for lights. And this, the day we posted it, it's like 100 new subscribers. And we did a behind the scenes of me at a wedding and it has gotten us almost a thousand subscribers. And it's like we've never really poured into YouTube like we want to. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, the things that are in my head for where we're going is keep getting killer guests on the podcast, new content for YouTube and, and template, like getting digital products out there. I just want uh, John to do all the work and I can try something like a sushi burrito. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. working on that. Yeah, he can have one. Can I just say, day. by the way, that your beard is stunning? Thank you. Thank it's you. literally okay. like oh, <laughs> shimmering. It looks. It's like I I do oil. Yeah. I, do, I I do oil. So it, yeah. it it's like the new sponsor on the podcast sounds like yeah 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 I like, I yeah. like yeah yeah I don't, I don't know about that but sure it's I, sparkling. I know nothing about beards. I cannot speak on this subject. I yeah. I had a friend come up to me at uh, Vision Quest, uh, uh, a film friend, and he was like, "Hey, I shoot um, a lot of product photos for for this beard oil company." Could I take some photos of your beard? I was like so. You had honored. a bigger beard at the time. I was like, I think you had left at that point because otherwise, otherwise, I definitely wouldn't have been. Yeah, <laughs> it's the one selected. But well, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, and, and this yeah. is an honor. You. Like, yeah, you guys are saying this is probably one of the first, second, third times you guys have been actually together in person. Uh, so this is it's like recording of a podcast. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Person. yeah. We've, we've been together in a person. lot of times, but this is like seeing a podcast. unicorn or something. Kind of great. Yeah, kind of. Thank you guys for being on. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you all over the interwebs and whatnot? We've made it hard. Yeah, we have made it very hard. Um, HowToFilmWeddings.com is our website. Yep. Um, at HowToFilmWeddings 
on um, everything. Instagram, YouTube is just How to Film Weddings. If you are interested in our Facebook group, it's facebook.howtofilmweddings.com. If you want to follow me, I post on my personal Instagram like once every three months, and it's I am dot Nick Miller, and John is way more active on that. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm at John Bunn with a tail at the end. Mm. The underscore. Yeah. At the end. But yeah, I mean, for us, we wanted it to be an easy hub for communication. So howtofilmweddings.com links you to all those things. And yep. we're honored yep. to be on a podcast. Yeah, you know, we've been you seeing you guys. You know, we've been championing you all. We think that, you know, if there are people out there that are wanting to create content like this to start doing it, it might be a foggy day at the beginning. Just keep moving, keep trying, like start trying things. Maybe it's not a podcast in this format, but you know, if you have that itch, start to, to scratch. Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun. It's just, a, I mean, out of everything, it's you, you learn a lot. It's, and uh, but man, I feel like I've learned so much, and we've had so much fun just doing it. It's just fun at the oh, end yeah. of the day. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think you have to introduce, I, we talk about this all the time with this art or business, you have to introduce challenge. You have to introduce challenge, and like at some point, you got to be okay with the fact that what you're making is marketable and serviceable, and the challenge is like not going to be that. Mm-hmm. No. I can't make this more challenging. I'm just an expert at making wedding films, and now I got to find something else that challenges me and pushes me. And so, growth is really hopefully one of the themes you've heard in this podcast is pers- is growth, business growth, personal personal growth, artistic growth. Like just be pushing yourself and challenging yourself. But you don't have to necessarily grow in maybe the way that you think you do. There might be another way to do it. And so just be looking. In, like I love that you guys brought up self-awareness a bunch because I think that's huge. So thank you guys for checking out the Wedding Pros podcast. Um, definitely subscribe. Do all the stuff that everyone tells you to do. Do that for us as well, which is hitting subscribe button. And thank you guys for checking it out today. <laughs>